home run drive away from beautiful Lake Washington. We're at Everest Park, home of the 2023 Junior League Softball World Series, where today's championship game features two undefeated squads. Milford, Connecticut, the champions of the East Region, taking on Bago City from the Philippines, representing Asia Pacific. Here's a look at how these two teams got here, both dominant through the knockout rounds. Connecticut has only allowed five hits total over the course of the entire knockout phase. And the Philippines, they've only allowed five base runners. This should be a good one here, competing for the 2023 Junior League Softball World Series Championship Trophy. Hi, everybody, and welcome here to Everest Park alongside North Carolina and professional softball star Brittany McKinney. I'm Sam Farber. It is a pleasure and a privilege to have you with us here today. Brittany, these two teams have been dominant throughout. A very entertaining game expected here today. Oh, the level of softball we're going to see today is top-notch. Both these teams go right at it. They're competitive. They run the base as well. I had butterflies driving to the field today. This is championship day. Can't wait to get started. Big part of the reason why this one's expected to be a lot of fun. We have two dominant pitchers in the circle. Let's start with Connecticut. Abby Cora, she has been on fire all tournament long. Yeah, she is commanding of the zone. She fills the zone up yesterday 75 percent of her pitches were strikes she doesn't fall behind hitters and then when she gets them in a hole she goes to her rise ball this pitch is explosive goes right over the bats of hitters a lot of swing and misses a lot of strikeouts from course she threw a no hitter one one batter away from a perfect game. She was outstanding yesterday. As good as she has been all tournament long, the MVP of the tournament to this stage is Erica Arnaiz, the lefty starter for the Philippines. Yeah, she is dominant, comes from the left side. My favorite pitch of hers is the curveball that she throws on both sides of the plate. And I love that she can run it into righties. You don't see that even at the highest level of softball, how she can get that ball in on the hands. A lot of jam shots, and she too has a great rise ball. When she gets ahead, she jumps right over the barrels of hitters. It's going to be a tough task for both of these offenses today, but hey, both of them have been really good all tournament long, each averaging eight runs per contest as we get set for this championship contest. And that, I promise you, phenomenal weather the entire week. It's been sunny, blue skies, 80 degrees every day. Ah, a little drizzle for the championship game. Cool everything down. Yeah, Pacific Northwest adds to the environment. It's fine. A little drizzle's not going to hurt anything. These pitchers are still going to be outstanding. I mean, we had a great fan, fan base, crowds loud. Everybody's ready to get going. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for Milford, Connecticut. Their manager, Brian Corris, stacks it up this way. Julia Seebeck will lead things off. She's hitting 533 on the tournament, followed by Lily Stankovic. Gabby Rodriguez is in the three spot. Maddie Delden will clean up, and then it's the pitcher, Abby Corris. Maya Fallon Silva has a home run on the tournament. She'll be followed by Nora Bo, Leah Corris, Ariella Diorio, Nyla Jazer, Maddie Barano and Chloe Capalbo. Milford, Connecticut averaging over eight runs per game. This is the team that's got a little bit more power between the two. If you're looking at their offenses, even though statistically it's very even, and we see the defense for the Philippines preparing to take the field. Yeah, I'm interested to see what Connecticut does from the first pitch. What adjustments are they going to make off of Arnaiz in, Arnaiz in the circle? Because you can't wait to the second and third at bat because you're not going to have a ton of opportunity. So I'm interested to see what they've seen from Arnaiz and what the hitters are going to do from the first pitch. There is Erica Arnaiz, 5-0 on the tournament yesterday in the semifinal against the Southwest Region champs from Texas. Only allowed four base runners the whole game. Two hits, two walks. She struck out 13 and seven shutout innings. She has just been dominant all week long. Yeah, she commands the zone. She has such good stuff. I mean, I, I don't know if I've seen movement like hers from the left side in a very long time. And the way that she can work all quadrants of the zone, we saw it yesterday. Hitters were guessing in the box. They didn't know what was coming next. She's able to set up her pitches very well, and she works ahead. And the zone. We saw it yesterday. Hitters were guessing in the box. They didn't know what was coming next. She's able to set up her pitches very well and she works ahead and that's just a great recipe for success. She's had 70 strikeouts this week so she doesn't use the <laughs> defense a ton but they've been good. Outfielders left to right. Bayos, Spinalo, and Caracas 
on the diamond. Fuentes and Labrino in the double play combo, second and short, respectively. Audrey Sarsona has the hot corner third base, and Andiana Guanafe is at first base. Mary Antoinette Sicapore is behind the plate doing the catching. We are ready to go. Championship Saturday, the 2023 Junior League Softball World Series is underway. First pitch time is 2.05 locally. Appreciate everyone tuning in around the country and around the world. Julia Seebeck at the plate. She'll take high. Two balls, no strikes. This has been a rarity to see Arnaiz in any kind of count that she's not ahead of. Yeah, you got to understand the, the nerves that go into a championship game. It may take her a couple pitches to get settled in, but I have no doubt she will. This is high again, ball three. Thank everyone tuned in in Milford, Connecticut, watching the East Champs about five in the evening over there, and especially to anyone tuned in the Philippines because it's five in the morning over oh, wow. there. Ball four, a four-pitch walk to start the day. Air four, Connecticut. Seabeck is aboard. That'll bring up Lily Stankovic. We'll see how long it takes our eyes to calm down, get in the zone here. Stankovic hitting 375 this week. First pitch. And she takes ball one. That's five in a row off the mark. And if Connecticut's able to stay disciplined in the box and not chase out of the zone, they're going to give themselves a better shot. We've seen it here. They haven't swung out a pitch yet. There's a strike. And I think runs are going to be at a premium with the pitchers we have out here today. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see some sacrifice bunts, trying to get runners into scoring position when you get the chance. 1-1 one, one offering, swing and it's foul back, one and two. Also keep an eye on the runner at first base, Julia Seebeck. She has three stolen bases this week and overall as a team, Ilford, Connecticut, 12 for 15 on straight steals, plus all the pitches in the dirt that is just commonplace in Little League. These runners know what to do. Yeah, there's a lot of speed at the top of this lineup, especially at first base. Call strike three. Arnai's 71st strikeouts of the Junior League Softball World Series and first of the title game. And what a response after a four-pitch walk to start off the game. She comes right back, and that curveball on the outside corner is a beautiful pitch. I think she's settled in now. Next up is Gabby Rodriguez. Gab Rod takes a strike. It's 0-1. In addition to being a softball star, competitive basketball player, youngest player on the team. She'll be an eighth grader this upcoming school year. Strike two. And I settling in. Wind up in the 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. Back-to-back -back punch outs. And that's what we're used to seeing, getting ahead 0-2. Curve balls to start off the bat and then comes with that great rise ball. So hard to lay off when you're behind in the count. Maddie Delden into the batter's box. Lefty-lefty matchup. First pitch is taken for strike. Home plate umpire for this championship game is Jeff Shuttle, part of a six-person umpiring crew. All volunteers, all excellent umpires earning their spot in a event like this, the Junior League Softball World Series. one is inside, one ball, one strike. Arna is now with 72 strikeouts and 10 walks this week. It's incredible. Uh, it's incredible. Strike called on the inside corner. After missing the zone on the first five pitches, Arnaiz 
is in position to bounce right back and strike out the side. Wind up in the one, two. Swing and a miss, strike three. Our nice. Strikes out the side, no score. Bottom of the first, Philippines to the plate next. That's the prize on the line today, the 2023 Junior League Softball World Series Championship Trophy. Milford, Connecticut versus Bongo City in the Philippines. No score going to the bottom of the first. Great crowd on hand here today in Kirkland, Washington. Community has been supporting the Junior League Softball World Series by hosting this tournament since 1999, 23rd year. Uh, they will hand out this championship trophy. Here's a look at the starting pitcher, Abby Corris. Your dad, Brian, is the manager, says she's a super competitor on the field and the goofiest kid off of it. She's all business, though, in the circle. No, I couldn't imagine her on the field and the goofiest kid off of it. She's all business, though, in the circle. No, I couldn't imagine her being anything but business and intense anywhere off the field, but you'll see her pitch today. And a lot like her nice for the Philippines, she works ahead of hitters. See no walks yesterday, no hits, no runs. And she has that deadly rise ball, a lot of swing and misses and strikeouts on both sides today. Here's the lineup for Bago City and the Philippines. Francis Fuentes, the manager, will lead things off with Froline Manalo. And it's Christine Jane Caracas, one of several young women on the team who's hit over 500 this week. And Diana Buenafe. Eric Arnaiz, the pitcher, will clean things up. And it's Mary Antoinette Sicapore, Nice Labrido, Therese Francine Fuentes, Audrey Sarsona, Daniela Bales, Cassandra Sumatra, and Isel Tanaman. Leading things off, it's Manalo, and she'll take a strike. Our line hitting 438 this week, seven for 16. Four runs batted in, five runs scored. She is, as the coaches have told us, the road runner of the team. Oh, one misses outside. Abby Corris's numbers this week, five and zero oh record, 0 0.22 earned run average. 40 strikeouts, four walks. She's allowed 17 hits the entire week. This is game seven, the championship for both these sides. She's been an absolute workhorse all week, carrying her team. She's a leader of this team. And she hasn't taken a game off. I, I, yesterday when we watched her play, she got stronger as the game went on. She was a dropped third strike or a wild pitch on a swinging strike three away from a perfect game. <laughs> the only person to reach base, reach base on a strikeout. It's incredible. Swing and a foul ball left side. One ball, two strikes. Talked about the pitchers a lot, but these offenses are very good. I mentioned before, Connecticut's got a little bit more power if you're comparing the raw numbers for the Philippines. Their strength is the entirety of the batting order can just rank. Everyone's a good hitter. The low batting average, low batting average is 250. <laughs> Everyone else is above 300. Uh, top to bottom, they're aggressive. They fight in the box. They're gritty. Brown ball over to second. Stankovic makes the play. Out number one. Some of the girls have taken the opportunity of being here in Seattle to go to a Mariners game. I, there are major league lines that don't have a 250 no, hitter. No. There isn't one who's not a 250 <laughs> hitter for the exactly Philippines. Right. Here's the defense for Connecticut. Along the diamond, that's Julia Seebeck at third. Gabby Rodriguez, the shortstop. Lily Stankovic just made the play at second. Delden at first base, outfielders left to right. It's Fallon Silva, Bove, and Jazer, and Chloe Capalbo is the catcher. Christine Jane Caracas up next. First pitch swung on and foul back. Caracas is hitting 571 this wow. week. Eight for 14. Big fan of the Dodgers and says her dream job, she wants to be a nurse someday. A one is outside, one ball, one strike. Brittany, you as a former high-level catcher, what do you see here on championship Saturday early from these two pitchers? You know, I, I think the experience that Abby Corris has in the past has really let her come out here and be confident from the first pitch. I don't get any 
nerve, nervous vibes from her. She is locked in, ready to go. And it's hard to treat a championship like any other game because in the reality, it's not. There's a lot on the line, especially all it took to get here. I don't see any of that coming from Chorus in the circle. She is locked in and ready to go. One ball and two strikes. Right-hander rocks and fires. And a called strike three on the off-speed pitch. Down by way of the K. First strikeout of the day for Abby Chorus. And I think that pitch right there is going to be really important as this game goes on because we know the Philippines are overly aggressive in the box. And if you can change speeds on them and freeze hitters like Chorus did right there, if that pitch is on, it'll be a great tool for her to use. And Diana Buenafe is up next. 353 batting average this week. Puts it on the ground right side. Nice stop at first by Delden. She'll take it herself, and it's a 1-2-3 inning defensively for Milford, Connecticut. No runs, hits or airs, no one left on, no score. Headed to the second at the Junior League Softball World Series. So far as advertised, Philippines and Connecticut, a pitcher's duel, no score, no hits. Erica Arnaz and Abby Chorus, the two pitchers, and they'll go head-to-head -to -head here to start the second. Chorus at the plate. First pitch he takes inside for ball one. Sam Farber, Brittany McKinney here with you for this championship game. Chorus, in addition to her spectacular pitching, a very reliable bat for the East Champs, hitting 400 this week. Ono is in there for a strike, one and one. Her dad, Brian Chorus, is the manager, and we talked to him before the game. This is a team that is returning, not all the players, but a couple of them here to the Junior League Softball World Series. Had a good tournament run last year, but didn't win at all. It just swung on and hit foul. And Brian told us last year he watched the championship game with Abby just beyond the left field fence watching the whole thing and telling locals, hey, we're going to be back here next year. We're going to be in this championship game. Yeah, putting it out there for the world, the confidence he had in his group last year, they were very competitive. They reloaded this year, and he's right where they said they would be. Pitch fouled back and out of play, spoke it into existence. He had reason for confidence. Not only are they back here at the Junior League Softball World Series, but last year's team of age group lower was in the Little League World Series in Greenville, and the team that reloaded into that group is back in Greenville again. I think the bar is set for the teams out of Connecticut. I mean, the expectation is to be playing on Saturday for a championship. And what a dynasty they're building out there. It's so fun to watch and just see how you know, the younger players look up to the older players, and that expectation is there. Yeah, UConn, uh, Oklahoma, UCLA, all your power programs that go go recruit for in high school. They think I think there's something going on over there. Erica Arnaz gets another strikeout. Chorus down by way of the K. Fourth strikeout in a row for Erica Arnaz after giving up a four-pitch walk to start the game. Yeah, I attribute that four-pitch walk to the first hitter she faces. A little excitement of starting out in the World Series, but she has locked in ever since. Back to her game plan, getting ahead and then getting hitters to chase that rise ball. So one away, top of the second, no score. The batter is Maya Fallon Silva. See her batting average 538. That is best on the squad so far here at the Junior League Softball World Series. Swings and misses 0 and 2. Once again, Arnaz is living in the zone for the most part. And these are really good hitters, but she's got 
the goods on everyone as she has all week long. Yeah, when I see swing and misses like that, when pitches are in the zone, that's just attributing to the movement that she has. I mean, that left to right movement on that curveball, it starts off the plate and then comes back on the plate. And when I would recruit when I was coaching in college and I go look for pitchers, I'm looking for the pitcher that gets the swing and misses. Big hitters, especially right now against Fallon Silva, we know how good she is, but to get her to swing and miss, you know that ball's jumping. 0-2 delivery, swung on, lifted out to left field. Bayos under it, and she'll make the grab for out number two. To be honest, that's as good of contact as we've seen basically all week on our nine. She's been that good, but Fallon Silva's that good of a hitter. Yeah, I mean, she squared that ball up behind in the count. That pitch was off the outside corner, and she also showed us her strength being able to pull that that far into left field. Next up, Leah Chorus. She was part of the Little League World Series team from Milford, Connecticut last year, now here in the Junior League Softball World Series with her older sister, Abby. His nickname is Beans. Dad said her Little League team coach, Rob, would call her Bean Bean the Hitting Machine. <laughs> That's great. And you can see how she's choked up in the box. You know that she's trying to shorten up her swing and just put the barrel on the ball. But sometimes it's so hard to shorten up when you're going against such a powerful pitcher. You're trying to match that power almost. My apologies, that's Nora Bove at the plate. Well, we've got Abby Chorus on deck. Bove striking out here. A one, two, three inning. Erica Arnais has struck out five of the six outs she's recorded so far. We go to the bottom of the second. No score between Connecticut and the Philippines. No score in the bottom of the second inning. Connecticut and Philippines playing in the title game of the 2023 Junior League Softball World Series. The Little League Community Heroes Recognition Program helps to honor those dedicated individuals who not only volunteer their time at local Little League programs, but also contribute in other ways to improve their communities. To learn more or to nominate a community hero, visit littleleague.org slash community heroes. Some of our heroes here, the umpiring crew, all volunteer group, although very accomplished umpires, many of them call high school state championship games. They'll call college games, and they give a lot of their time. That's Gareth Gilson at the third base side, told us he started umpiring T-ball. He started there, working his way all the way up 21 years as an umpire. He's from Victoria, British Columbia, and our crew from all over the country, all over the world here today. Yeah, we can't appreciate how much they've done for this sport and elevating the level of play, knowing the rules, been in the game for so long. They've done a tremendous job, and we cannot thank them enough for their time and to be out here at this event. And they do a great job, and important, even though they volunteer here for Little League, again, they're umpiring some of the big games out there, and, and several of them wrote how when they'll show up to a local Little League game, they've got the full gear, they're taking it seriously as they always do. They can tell the players, like, oh, we've got a real ump today. We've got someone who knows what he's doing back there and appreciate their efforts as well. Yeah, they're absolute pros at, at what they do. And you, you love to see that they love the sport so much that they're willing to go away from the paying umpiring jobs they have to come out here and volunteer their time. Bottom of the second inning, it's Erica Arnais, the pitcher for the Philippines at the plate now. A one foul tips, it's 0-2. She struck out her counterpart, Abby Chorus, to start the top half of the second. And now Abby Chorus trying to return the favor. She's ahead in the count 0-2. Arnais hitting 500 this week. Five runs batted in, six runs scored. Wind up in the 0-2 pitch. Hit down the left field line, foul ball. Chris Parks there to make the call. And as aggressive as the Philippines are, now that Cordes is out in front, 0-2, she's got to be really careful with her placement on this pitch. Wheels and deals. 
Fought off another one. Arnaiz, five runs batted in, six runs scored, and that 500 batting average. What can't she do? <laughs> I mean, she does it all in the circle, in the box. What an athlete. Only 15 years old. 0-2 pitch, swing and pokes it to the left side. It's junior league softball letter, level if you're thinking in comparison to Greenville and Williamsport, think one age group over. So still very young players working their way up towards even the high school ranks in almost all cases, but a little bit older than the Little League championships in Greenville and Williamsport. 0-2, this one she straightens out to the right center field gap. It'll touch down and go all the way to the wall. Arnai stops at second with the first hit of the game. How about that at bat by Arnai? I mean, she was swinging at every pitch that came out of Abby Corris's arm. She was going to make contact, and then she gets something over the plate, just too sweet on an 0-2 count. She takes advantage of it, leadoff double. So a runner at second for the Philippines. That is the first hit surrendered by Abby Corris in nine innings of pitching. Incredible. She's been outstanding. Marie Antoinette Sikapore is at the plate. Hitting 357, five runs batted in. She is a good power hitter on this Philippines team. Three of her five hits have been for extra bases. And they're such smart hitters in this lineup. They always find a way to move the runner, looking to hit backside, put down sacrifice bunts. They play station to station, looking to get one run across at a time. Count now one and one. Because we assume runs are going to be at a premium, do you think maybe a sacrifice with a one strike count here? Maybe if she was on first base. I think give her a shot with the power she has with the runner at second base. Take that power away from her. Does lay down the bunt towards the circle. Chorus fields, throws to first, and it gets away. Arnaiz in to score. Philippines on the board. And they do go with the sacrifice bunt. Coach gave her one, one chance to get a strike, swung through it, puts on the sacrifice. And execution is what the Philippines do best. Anytime they're asked to put down a sacrifice bunt, the first pitch they get, they always get it down between today and yesterday. That extra pressure on the defense, the ball gets away into right field. They switch places, one run across, and runner's still in scoring position. It's a sacrifice plus an air on the throw. First run of the game is across Erica Arnais, making it one nothing. And here's Brian Corris trying to settle down his infield. Both of these teams, they are returning squads here to Kirkland. Mentioned Milford, Connecticut. This entire generation of softball players has only known Little League World Series competition, but Bago City is also a traditional program that has returned here, but most of the players on both teams are new and both of the coaching staffs, there's new people in charge. So some familiarity, but as with any Little League program, a lot of new faces. Right, and that, those nerves that we talked about in a championship game, that first ball hit to you, the first time you called upon to make a play on the big stage, you know, it really gets to you in between the ears sometimes. Nice, Lobrito is the batter. First pitch fouled away. One nothing, the Philippines on top. Brito hitting 375. Four runs scored. Says the coolest place she's traveled so far, the USA. That's a pretty cool place, I like it. Oh one, one it up in the air, no one went to it, it's gonna fall in for a base hit. Very uncharacteristic, the Connecticut defense. They've been solid all week long. That's how they got here. 
course really relies on them in the dirt to make the plays. This ball just hung in the air too long and nobody went after it. Just miscommunication. See Seebeck at third charging, that's past her. Abby Course not exactly sure where her positioning was. Didn't go after that ball. Brings up Therese Francine Fuentes for her first at bat of the game. First pitch, he shows bunt, pulls it back. Runner goes to second. Two in scoring position, nobody out. Seeing at the plate, her dad, Francis Fuentes, is the manager. One old pitch fouled off, and we talked to him before the game, and this is where Little League is so much fun because it's a generational thing and a game passed down from one to the next. So Francis's dad managed the Philippines team that won this tournament. There he is, 20 years ago. Francis's sister was on that team, Rachel Fuentes Limacali. She sang the anthem today. She played second base. Now Francis is the manager. His daughter is the second baseman. What an incredible story. I mean, it just makes it mean so much more. This is so much bigger than just a softball game. And the coach was telling us that story. It gave me chills. I mean, it's so special. I bet it's hard for dad to sit on that side of the fence, though. <laughs> He's got to be loving it. And Francis was so excited to tell the story. And mm -hmm. uh, you could tell how much it meant to him. And that's throughout Little League. Anyone who played Little League, coached their kids playing Little League, that's what it's all about. Well, it's some of the best memories you'll make. It, it's, I remember playing Little League and remember some of the games, but I just remember hanging out with my family, my friends, the snacks, getting to know people, hanging out after the game, concession stand. It's, it's just a special environment. And then having your family there is, makes it that much better. Two balls, two strikes. Swing and a miss, strike three. Abby Chorus bounces back to get a K for the first out of the second inning. Still not out of trouble yet, though, with runners in second and third and only one away. Big time response by Abby Chorus. Things were getting pretty chaotic behind her. A couple mistakes on defense, a big hit. She comes right back and gets a strikeout. Philippines, an opportunity to expand their lead. Audrey Sarsona is the batter. Shows bunt, lays it down, third base side. Seebeck has it, fakes the throw, now back to third, not in time. Heads up, base running, saved and out here. This was a safety squeeze. Runner's not going until the release of the throw. Seebeck tries to bait her with a fake throw, but she wasn't far enough on the bag. She was ready for it. Great base running by Sikapore at third base. That play was just awesome all the way around yeah. Seebeck. That's as good of a fake, pump fake as you can have. <laughs> Gabby Rodriguez knew right where to go behind the runner. But the bases are loaded, still only one out after the fielder's choice. First pitch, swing and a miss. Daniela Beos is the batter. And this is where you really see the strength of this Bago City Philippines team. We're at the bottom three in the batting order. Their batting averages are Beos 429, then 583, then 333. What's it take to get up in the lineup for, for the coach? But they've done a great job turning over the lineup to the top and they've come in in situations with runners on and have stepped up with the continuous batting order it is so important for the teams to be strong throughout with 11 and 12 hitters that come up to the plate no balls two strikes wind up and the pitch just outside the continuous batting order is a new feature in 2023 across Little League, and it's been such a wonderful addition. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of the hands of the coaches. They don't have to worry about mandatory play, who's been up to the plate yet, worry about any of that stuff. The one-two pitch, swing and a miss, strike three. Got her with a fastball on the outside corner. 
I tell you what, if Connecticut can get out of this jam with just giving up one run, that's going to be a huge win in their book. I think the Philippines would be very disappointed to leave three runners on, bases loaded. But Abby Course really stepping up when things seem to be like they're getting in trouble. Cassandra Sumatra is the batter. First pitch, swing and a miss, strike one. Just to finish the thought on the continuous order, so it's, it's no longer a one through nine. It goes one through, in these cases, 11 or 12. And every player knows where their spot is in the order. They get more at-bats over the course of the week. They're more involved. And that's just not here at the championship level, but all through the league. Yeah, I love that they've implemented this this year. I mean, everybody has a hand in the game. Everybody has an opportunity to leave their mark. Like you said, the coaches don't have to worry about the mandatory play rules, and they get to be locked in on coaching. Abby Chorus is locked back in. Base is loaded. Two outs. She's got an 0-2 count. Right-hander rocks and fires. Swing and a miss. Strike three. And after seeing a runner get to third with nobody out, Abby Chorus able to limit the damage by striking out the side. Philippines is on the board, but Abby Chorus limits the damage. At the end of two, Philippines one, Connecticut to the plate next. Arna is the starter in the circle for the Philippines. She's getting it done on both sides. She had the leadoff double in the second. Came around to score the game's only run, and so far in the circle, been almost untouchable. Yeah, untouchable's right. She's had nine swing and misses through the first seven hitters. Her ball's jumping off her bat <laughs> and move as it goes towards the plate when she's pitching. I mean, this is what we came to expect from her, and she showed up and she's showing out. Leading off the top of the third for Milford, Connecticut, it's going to be Leah Kors. My apologies, last inning I got ahead of myself. I was reading her stats when Nora Bow was at the plate. Nora. have got lots of good details from all the girls that we'll share next time she comes up in the batting or hopefully no one tells them that we read whatever <laughs> like anchorman style whatever they write down here oh yeah no. i mean we do our best to check it but there's hundreds of softball players at this thing so we greatly appreciate right. them sharing some special details about themselves Chorus fouls it back. Case in point, Leah's favorite singer, Taylor Swift. Favorite food, mac and cheese. Coolest place she's traveled, Greenville, North Carolina. That's oh. where she was last year in the Little League Softball World Series. Have you been to those facilities? It's incredible. What they've done down there for the Little League and what they've built. It's such a special place. Takes a called strike three. That's six strikeouts now for Erica Arnaiz. And you can just see how she gets in the hitters' heads because they can't just sit on one location. They're guessing that rise ball coming in, and instead she paints that outside corner for a backwards K. Brings up Ariella Diorio, who has a home run this week. She is a power hitter. First pitch, big swing, but comes up empty. It's 0-1. And she's not a hitter that gets cheated in the box. If she's going to swing, she's going all in. If she does run into a pitch with the power she has, something up in the zone can go a really long ways off her bat. Our eyes, 76 strikeouts, 10 walks in the circle this week. One is chased, one ball and two strikes. And you can see the frustration from the hitters swinging out of the zone. And they know how good Arnaiz is. But these are also very good hitters themselves. One, two is low. I think the strikeout total and alone puts it in perspective. But one, one more stat for you, coming into today, Arnaiz had thrown 32 and a third innings. Only 27 non-strikeouts required to get through that. I mean, balls do not get put in play off of her. 
Case in point, that's strikeout number seven today for Erica Arnides. And it's her bread and butter. She gets ahead in this rise ball. She's, the spin on that is so tight, out of the hand. I mean, it looks like a pitch belt high and then last second jumps. And she doesn't make mistakes. You see a lot of rise ball pitchers, they get in trouble when they leave that ball hanging. She does not leave her rise ball in the zone. Nyla Jazer up next. These are five runs scored this week. 357 on base percentage. Another young woman who says the coolest place she's visited so far is Greenville, North Carolina. A one swung on and missed, 0 and 2. Strong Philippines rooting contingent here. Getting behind Erica Arnais, who's got an 0 2 count. Looking to strike out the sign for the second time today. Erica Arnais, she is killing it in the circle. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Another strikeout. Three in a row. This rise ball. Let's see if the Philippines can add to their lead. Great crowd on hand here at the Junior League Softball World Series. It's the championship game, two unbeaten teams, Milford, Connecticut, and Bongo City of the Philippines. A one-nothing game thus far. So far, the double for Erica Arnais, helping lead to the Philippines' only run thus far. Sam Farber, Brittany McKinney, the star in North Carolina, and the professional ranks of softball here with you for the Junior League Softball World Series title game. So far, as advertised, we've seen great play, particularly great pitching from both teams. Yeah, and Abby Course really stepped up for her team last inning. They were in a jam. They're making mistakes they don't usually make on defense, but she got them out of it. She dug in and put the team on her back to just leave it at one run. It was an incredible, gutsy performance in that inning. There were runners at second and third, nobody out. She proceeded to strike out the side. Yeah. That's the, I mean, that's your leader of your team. She steps up when your team needs them most, and I think she's doing a nice job in the circle, give up the one hit. I think she can take advantage of the aggression in the box from the Philippines. Work off the plate. Let's see that change up a little bit more. Isel Tanaman is the batter. First pitch, swing and a miss. Cell hitting 333 this week, five runs batted in. She will celebrate her 15th birthday in a little bit over a week. Hoping to do so as a Junior League Softball World Series champion. A one pitch, swing and a miss, strike two. Speaking of birthdays, got to wish a happy birthday to the second baseman for Milford, Connecticut, Lily Stankovic. 14th birthday, what better way to celebrate than playing in a championship game? I think that's the best present you could get for your birthday. And it wasn't given to her. She had to work hard for it. Happy birthday. Whoa. She has had a great week. Really four RBIs, five runs scored, couple of stolen bases, hitting about 350. Great athlete, a lot of speed. She's made great plays at second base. Wind up in the one-two pitch. Got her. Strike three, swinging. A great job by Abby Corris getting ahead, but not leaving the ball over the plate. She got ahead one-two. This pitch, it's off the plate, but it's way too close to take for strike three. Great location to get the, the hitter to chase. So first trip through the lineup for Abby Corris. She only gives up the two hits, but a run did plate. Struck out five for Lai Manalo up for her second A.B. and fouls off the first pitch. And I mean, that just speaks to how good Abby Corris is today and has been because this Philippines lineup collectively has hit 424 all week. As a team. As a that's, team. That's those numbers. <laughs> I, I just can't put it in perspective. I mean, there are no holes in the lineup top to bottom. Bouncer up the middle, Stankovic, the birthday girl, Fields.
Spencer up the middle. Stankovic, the birthday girl, fields, fires, and the speed of Manalo will give her an infield single. And the defense did everything right on that play. Manalo going to the slap, just trying to get on top of it, pound it into the ground, great location. Gets enough air on the ball to let her speed get down the line. I mean, Lily Stankovic couldn't get rid of that ball any faster than she did just now. Christine Jane Caracas up next. First pitch shows bunt, pulls back, takes a strike, throw down to second, in time! We've seen some great plays by the catchers in the last two days. Ton of speed, we saw it in the previous play. This ball and this tag from Capallo to Rodriguez. I think they're going to review it, but I think the tag gets down. They are going to ask for a review. Francis Fuentes, the manager, any, it does look like the tag is down to anything about having to give a path to the bag that could come into play here. I mean, they could go if they're asking to review for obstruction, but I think she's straddling the baseline pretty well. I mean, perfectly positioned. I'm telling you, this tag I, this is what makes that play, is Gabby Rodriguez catching the ball and going straight down, not chasing the runner, straight down. Anything else, and that's a stolen base. Our fantastic team back at Williamsport is going to examine this one. They just do a tremendous job, not just relaying from us here in Kirkland, Washington, back and forth, but they're monitoring Little League regionals and World Series championships all over the country. Be sure to say thank you whenever you're visiting our sponsoring hotels, where we are at Viberia and Kirkland, Doesn't get much closer than this, but to throw out Monalo from the Philippines. I mean, that, that's a hard task. She is so fast, goes straight into the bag, had a great jump. Jeff Shuttle will give the signal. She's out. Incredible. So two away in the bottom half of the third inning. Christine Jane Caracas is up next. I should say will return to the play. It was a caught stealing. Count is 0-1. And, and, and Caracas even showed butt and got into the eyes of Capalbo behind the plate. I mean, just a great job. It's the fourth runner caught stealing by the Connecticut catching contingent this week. Fly ball, shallow center. It's down for a base hit. And that makes the caught stealing that much bigger because if she had been safe, she's probably, at the very least, trying to score on that. Oh, no doubt. I mean, that could be a huge change in this game to limit base runners. I mean, that was a leadoff hitter getting on base. And then following up with a base hit. Now you got two outs. The pressure's not as, as big as it would be if Monolo was standing on third base. On Diana Buenafe. Up next, she's 0 for 1 with a ground out. 333 hitter this week. Abby Chorus sees it chopped over to short. Lunging for it, Rodriguez. Long throw. She got her. Great play by Gabby Rodriguez. Throwing a little across her body. Had to hurry, but able to complete the play for the third out of the inning. No run, two hits, no errors. One stranded through three. One nothing. Philippines. It's no airs. Four left on the bases by the Philippines. No runs, no hits. One air and one stranded so far for Milford, Connecticut. We head to the top of the fourth inning of this Junior League Softball World Series Championship game. Two undefeated teams, two undefeated starting pitchers. So far, it's a close one. Erica Arnaiz, though, eight strikeouts, three innings. 
he has been untouchable. Yeah, as advertised, what we've seen from her, I mean, the consistency she has to come in day in and day out and do what she does at an elite level. And hitters haven't found a way to adjust or an answer for what she's dealing. She has thrown 17 innings in the knockout round. So just since it was winner go home essentially. And she has allowed six base runners. <laughs> and one of the first batter of the game got on base off of her. You thought maybe something would be a little bit different, but no. Much of the same today. Maddie Bonanno is the batter, swings and misses. It's 0 and 2. Mad Bon is hitting 455 this week. Showing the depth of the Milford, Connecticut lineup as well. It's a team hitting 358. 0 2. Check swing. They'll appeal. She did not go around, so one ball, two strikes. I'm watching Bonanno in the in the box. She's moving in the back of the box. She's gone to the front of the box. She's up on the plate, trying to do anything she can to get an advantage. One-two pitch. Takes a call, strike three. Change in the eye level, going back down around the knees. And that is the ninth strikeout of the game for Erica Arnaiz. The pitch calling has been phenomenal in the execution. I mean, you can call any pitch you want, but the ability to execute, hitters are looking for that rise ball with two strikes, trying to lay off of it, and then she just takes one down at the knees, freezing hitters. Chloe Capalbo is the batter. First pitch swinging, hits it down the right field line. Caracas will make the catch. Back to the top of the order for Milford, Connecticut. And 11 straight retired by Erica Arnaiz. We're back to the only batter who reached base safely. That's Julia Seebeck, who walked to start the game. Takes high ball one. She was incredibly disciplined her first at bat. You, know, you want to go out there and swing and make things happen, especially as a leadoff. But she does her job very well in that position. Swings and fouls off the 1-0 pitch. It's a ball and a strike now to Julia Seebeck, who's one of a few twins on the team. She has a twin brother, Colin, and says her special talent is annoying her brother. <laughs> Takes inside. Really good eye shown today here by Seebeck. Arnaiz really like that location. That's that curveball from the lefty that's going to break across the plate and run into the hands of the right-handed hitters. Swing and a miss, two and two. One nothing to score. Philippines leading in the top half of the fourth. Erica Arnaiz. 2-2 pitch, chopped over to third. It came off the foot of the batter. Throw to first is in time, and now they're going to say timeout and talk it over. Yeah, Seebeck didn't even really step out of the box. We're going to see if anyone saw it come off the body of Seebeck, which would instantly make it a foul ball. Chorus asking you 100%, and... I mean, it's close, but the way she just kind of fell out of the box and didn't continue running makes me believe she thinks she got hit in the toe. And they say out, and Brian Chorus is going to ask for the review. I mean, these are the kinds of plays where 
I think Derek Jeter once upon a time tricked an umpire, but most of the time the initial reaction is pretty honest, especially if you were hit. No doubt. I, I don't think, I think any reason to not run this out, especially with her speed. I mean, she had a good chance of beating the ball out, but it, she believes it hit her foot, and it's just hard for me on these replays to see anything overwhelmingly tell me that this call is going to be overturned. It, it, the, yeah, that's that's the hard part of it is the reaction of the player you believe is pretty telling, but because of what it's called on the field, you kind of need enough evidence to change it, and the reaction is, is more telling than anything else because you, you don't see it clearly come off the top of her foot, but she says right there, it hit me. Right. I mean, the, the, but you also, you know, if younger players are watching, you know, play to the whistle. I know there's no whistles, but you finish the play out, and then we can go back and try and figure out if it hits your foot. Stopping there, you don't give yourself a chance either way. So they are taking a look. Seen one challenge made, the call in the field stood on a caught stealing at second base. Umpires have been very good all week, but it's good to have the, the replay as backup, especially in a championship game. You want to be right. No doubt, and I appreciate the umpire not calling something he didn't see. He clearly didn't see the foot. The reaction was there. And the call stands. So a ground out ends the top of the fourth inning. 12 in a row retired by Erica Arnaz. Philippines still leading 1-0. Beautiful downtown Seattle, the Space Needle. About a 30 minute to, according to the locals, two hour drive, depending on traffic <laughs> from where we are here on the other side of Lake Washington. Here in Kirkland, Blue Angels are in town. There's a lot going on. Mariners had a series earlier this week, but Today, the main event is right here at Everest Park, the Junior League Softball World Series Championship. Bago City of the Philippines leading 1-0 over Milford, Connecticut. Sam Farber, Brittany McKinney here with you on ESPN. Thanks for joining us today and all week long. It's been an outstanding tournament and a great final so far. It's the pitching and timely hitting of Erica Arnaz that's proven just slightly to be the difference. And she's a difference maker. Uh, she came up with a, with a double, got an RBI, scored. I mean, she's doing it all. That run is attributed to her. She's keeping the other team off the board. And I mean, we've got a great ball game. You couldn't ask for anything more for a championship. The environment's here, the fans are engaged, the players are engaged, and it's a one nothing pitcher's duel. Arnaz into the batter's box. In her third double of the week, her 10th hit of the week. In her first A.B. earlier today. First pitch swinging and pops it up. Rodriguez, the shortstop, will make the catch. Stankovic was there for backup. She was right underneath there to make the catch and it slipped through. They're not going to let anything hit the dirt because that is a massive out with Arnaz and hit her power and ability to get on base coming up as the leadoff. That first out was huge. Mary Antoinette Sikapore, the batter, had a sacrifice in her first plate appearance and reached on an air. Swings and misses. It's 0-1. 357 batting average. Didn't get an RBI last time, but put the wheels in motion by putting it in play. Swing, grounder to third, nice stop. Seabeck to her feet, two down. Defense is really stepping up behind Abby Chorus. Philippines putting the ball in play. Seabeck stepping up into the hole, goes onto her knees and throws a strike over to first base. Great play on the hot corner. Next up, nice libretto. Abby Chorus jumps in front, it's 0-1. 
his favorite movie, The Avengers. So she plays Little League to give honor to her country. Philippines in position to take Junior League Softball World Series. One ball, one strike. Chorus wheels and deals. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Chorus looking for her second one, two, three inning of the afternoon. Deep breath, wind up, one, two pitch. And it's lined into left field to base hit. Nice libretto, two for two today. Course did a great job coming out, getting ahead of Libretto in the box, but that one-two pitch is just too sweet, knowing how aggressive the Philippines are, especially with two strikes. The Libretto does a nice job of not trying to pull this ball, goes with it, and dumps it into left field. She is at first. There's Francine Fuentes next. Manager's daughter swings and misses. It's 0-1. I'll just say she is one of the leaders of the team. I told you before, her aunt 20 years ago was the second baseman for a championship winning Philippines team. Her grandfather was the manager of that team. And now history potentially repeating itself 20 years later, not just with Father managing, daughter second base, but they are in line for a championship if this result holds. There's Grandpa. Think he is having more fun watching this or would rather be managing? I mean, it's hard, so hard when you're sitting in the stands. Runner goes, throw to second. It's in time, they got her. A second caught stealing for Chloe Capalbo. And that will end the bottom half of the fourth inning. So Francine Fuentes will lead off the fifth for the Philippines. They're still up 1-0. In Chip Black, it goes to the winner of today's final. Bago City in the Philippines currently leading Milford, Connecticut 1-0. Erica Arnaiz in the circle. She has retired 12 in a row after surrendering a leadoff walk. Included in that are nine strikeouts. Leading off the fifth inning, it's the birthday girl, Lily Stankovic, 14 years old today. Yeah, the second time through the lineup, too. Second time she's going to get a chance to go off of our eyes. And we're getting late in this game. These adjustments have to happen now. Maybe see some small ball, just putting the ball in play, making the defense work, making some noise in the box. First pitch lays down a bunt. Third base pickup by Sarsona. Throw to first. It's not in time and broken up a little bit. I think it hit her in the back. Either way, she's safe. Leadoff runner aboard for Connecticut. I love that. I, I love that, that she went first pitch, tries to get herself on base, drops a great bunt down the third base line, uses her speed, barehanded by Sarsona at third. I think you're right, the, just the timing of it. Runner got in the way. I think she would have beat it anyway. It but did look like it, yeah. Now there's a runner on base, no outs. How are they going to get her into scoring position? Gabby Rodriguez, the batter, first pitch. She swings and misses. Rodriguez, six runs batted in this week. Rod squares to bunt, popped it up behind home plate, and it's into the fencing. No balls and two strikes. Going to be the youngest of three kids of Dave and Sandra, older siblings Alex and Casey. 0-2, foul straight back.
Lee Stankovic, a leadoff, bunt single. First hit of the game against Erica Arnaiz. 0-2 pitch, swing, liner up the middle, that's the second base hit. And this pitch was down in the zone. We haven't seen a lot of two strike pitches that aren't up at the eyes of the hitters, but does a nice job. See how long she stays through that pitch. Is able to drive it right back where it came from. Feel a little life coming from the dugout from Connecticut. Getting a little loud. This is the best opportunity they, they've had all game to get a run across. Addie Delden is the batter. AKA Mad Dog. Champs from Connecticut energized. Two on, nobody out. Trailing one nothing. Squares to bunt, lays it down. Diving effort, she got it. Arnaiz able to field it for the first down of the inning. What can she do? <laughs> you tell me she can hit, she can pitch, and she can play defense. Incredibly tough play after throwing a pitch, sees the ball in the air, does not hesitate. I mean, she is one inch away from having bases loaded and no outs, but comes up with a big play. Abby Chorus now up, trying to help her own cause. Starting pitcher for Connecticut has been so good all week long. It's only given up one run today. Got it here with two on, only one out. Best run scoring opportunity so far for Connecticut. And there's a lot of speed on second base. Anything into the grass. Madden Stinkovic looking to score. Fouls it away, one ball, one strike. Second, Lily Stankovic, a single to start the inning. Gabby Rodriguez, singled as well, she's at first. 1-1 one, one delivery. Low, ball two. Abby was here last year with her dad, Brian, and Milford, Connecticut's squad that qualified for the Junior League Softball World Series, didn't make the final. Father and daughter watch the game. They believed that they would be back with a chance to win it. Here they are. It will be a 3-1 pitch to Chorus with the tying run in scoring position. She's showing incredible discipline too. That was a great rise ball that we've been seeing hitters chase all game long. Abby Chorus is able to hold back on it. 3-1, fouls it to the right side, count is full. I know she wants that pitch back, just missed it. She has come through in the clutch at the plate before, says the highlight of this season for her leading up to the World Series, a walk-off single in the regional championship game, bottom 10, two outs. She takes strike three. Erica Arnaiz falls behind 3-1 and then works this count back. When she needs a strikeout, she can find a way to do it right here. Curveball, outer half of the plate. Makes a tremendous defensive play. The hitter before comes back with a big strikeout. Now she's got the two outs, one out away from ending this threat. That's the 10th strikeout of the game. Next up is Maya Fallon Silva. Normally you'd make a bigger deal about 10 strikeouts, but that's kind of routine. We don't, we don't, we don't get too excited until our nice gets at least 15. 15, okay, that's when we'll celebrate. 0-2. Oh Much better at bats from Connecticut, second time through. Our nice is not just rolling like she was, they're fouling balls off. A little bit more discipline with that up pitch. Now falling behind 
0-2 pitch. Good take by Maya Fallon Silva. One ball and two strikes. Fallon Silva is hitting 500 this week. She does have a home run. It's off another. Hands one and two. She has ability to change this game with one swing. Where's Philippines? Not a lot of power. Base hit team. Connecticut with their power, especially from Fallon Silva. They're never out of this game. One, two. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Arnaiz Electric. She has struck out 11 today. She scored the game's only run. And then defensively, two on, nobody out. The diving stop. Philippines still leads, 1-0. Milford, Connecticut had a really good shot at a run to tie the game. But Erica Arnaiz, a defensive diving play, plus two more strikeouts. She's up to 11 in the circle. Keeps it one nothing in favor of the Philippines. Sam Farber, Brittany McKinney here with you on ESPN Championship Saturday. Friends and fans of softball taking in this one in the seats beyond the outfield fence. A great crowd here today as we determine a title. Philippines with a 1-0 lead. Abby Corris has been really, really good in the circle. She's only given up five hits the entire contest and has five strikeouts of her own. And she's been even better and has stepped up when the Philippines have really threatened bases loaded situation. She's getting strikeouts. I mean, her toughness in the circle is incredible. Nothing's getting to her. She's pitching her game. And one nothing game, they're right here in it, and she's keeping them in the game. Therese Francine Fuentes is the batter. First pitch, swing and a miss, strike one. She was at bat when nice Labrito was caught stealing, which wrapped up the bottom half of the fourth inning. Called strike. There have been a couple more opportunities for the Philippines to score this game than Big time run scoring opportunities for Connecticut, but Abby Corris has been outstanding. She had the bases loaded, or runners at second and third, I should say, with nobody out, got out of it without anyone scoring beyond that point. Yeah, and things behind her defensively weren't going as planned, so for her to not let the noise get to her, not worry about the runners, and just do her job one pitch at a time, that was a gutsy performance to get out of that inning. One ball, two strikes. Swing and a miss, strike three. Sixth punch out of the contest for Abby Corris. That's 46 this week at the Junior League Softball World Series. It's not a fun hitter. It's not fun to be a hitter today in this championship series. We have two great pitchers going at it. Abby Corris showing off her rise ball once again. And lead off out. Audrey Sarsona is next. First pitch, swing and a foul ball. And I think Abby's done a nice job of adjusting her game throughout the second time through the lineup. The more she sees their hitters, understanding their plan and combating that, working off the plate, changing speeds, letting these hitters get themselves out. No balls, one strike. Here's the pitch. Bunted third base side and slipping a little bit as she received it with Seebeck does not have a play. And there's just something about putting in the ball in play, making something happen, forcing defenses to play defense and get behind a pitcher that's rolling. We saw Connecticut do it last inning with a bunt. Now again a bunt and 
Unfortunately for Seebeck, I think her feet just slipped on the dirt underneath her. She was all over it. Sarsona aboard on the air. Daniela Beos is next. And that hit her. Or no, did it hit the bat? No, they're saying it hit her. Some confusion initially. But did she, so they're saying she did not attempt? And it is on, a, they now say it is on a swing. So here it is, and she's got her fingers up. I'm not sure that. Did it hit her in the head though? Yep. I think the ball here, ugh. Boy, that stuff. Does it change direction off the bat before it hits her in the helmet? Well, she's holding her finger when she's going down to first base. So I think they're going to rule this off the bat into the head while she's in the box. Foul ball, one strike. That's a rough strike. Yes. Finger, head. This time she executes the box, scooped up at third. Seebeck to first. Stankovic covering, now back to second. Close, but not quite. Bejos takes one off the finger in the head, trying to butt the pitch before. Very next pitch, asked to get the sacrifice down again, and she does it. I don't think, I think I'd be shying away from the ball. That's incredible. Check it out, right back at it, no fear. Perfectly placed bunt, moves her runner over, does the job she's asked to do. Go check on Sarsona over at second. Checking her left shin after sliding back into second base. You mentioned the execution of the Philippines, not just here in Little League, all across. I mean, you see major leaguers who they're asked to bunt and they're, they're trying to bunt it perfect down the line. They end up fouling it off or not keeping it, you know, not executing the play. Philippines, every time they go up there, bunts down. Yeah, very nice moving. pitch. It's incredible. It, 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 the discipline and the fundamentals that they have to do, drop the bunt when they're asked to do is why they're so successful. I mean, they don't have the power we've seen from other teams. They get the runners in scoring position. Blue Angels are in attendance, taking in our championship game. Aerial view of a runner at second in a one nothing contest. Philippines leading Connecticut. Cassandra Sumatra is the batter. Dream job, flight attendant. Not available for the Blue Angels. <laughs> Ball, no strikes, swings, and bats it foul. It's one and one. Team from Bago City, they had a long trip to get here. Speaking of flight attendants, flight from Manila to LAX, 13 hours. Jeez. Then another three hour flight from LA up to Seattle. Now, does the LA flight seem quicker because it's only three, or it's the last three, so it just feels that much longer? Good question. One I hope to not have an answer to at times. <laughs> <laughs> not that I don't want to travel. It'd be great to go visit the Philippines, but I, 13 hours, that's a long time in a plane. That is a long time. That's dedication. And then come out here and play ball. <laughs> yep. And no go jet unbeaten lag. till now. Right? 2 1, swing, and a sky high pop up. Stankovic under it, and that will end. The home half of the fifth inning. No runs, no hits, one air, one stranded in scoring position. End of five. Philippines still leading, one nothing. Six outs away. The Philippines are right now from winning the 2023 Junior League Softball World Series title. You can find Little League on social media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok at the official handles at Little League. And don't forget to use the hashtag LLWS scroll through the archive see all the great plays here in Kirkland all week long and they just posted the diving catch made by Erica Arnaiz from the circle they are on top of it no question they'll post the championship celebration congrats 
in the Senior League Baseball Championship earlier today. Curacao winning a title. We'll see who will join them on a championship Saturday. Will it be Bongo City of the Philippines or can Milford, Connecticut complete a comeback? Nora Bove is going to lead off here in the sixth. First pitch swing and a miss. Saw Connecticut last inning make some noise by getting on base, using bunts, putting the ball in play. Takes low, her favorite team, the New York Mets, and says the most fun thing about playing Little League, hitting nukes and robbing home runs. <laughs> yeah, yep, that's it, there it is. Pop up, behind the plate, Sikapore able to make the catch. And our nice is right there, just in case anything went wrong, but incredible play by Sikapore. Sikapore behind the plate, this ball is skied right behind her. Not only does she have to find the ball, she has to work around the umpire. Locked in, focused, great play. Leah Chorus is next. Younger of the two Chorus siblings on this team. And they've got a little brother, Tyler, who's a little leaguer as well. First pitch fouled off. No balls in one strike. Philippines one, Connecticut zero. Top of the sixth. Philippines five outs away from the championship. And Connecticut, in theory, is one swing away from tying things up. I think their timing's better at the plate. Fouling ball straight back, just missed there. Just having to combat that movement coming from Arnaiz. Swing and a miss, strike three. 12K day for Erica Arnaiz. In the championship game, she is bringing her best stuff. Aside from the first hitter in the very first inning, a four-pitch walk, everything's been lights out ever since. That brings up Ariella DiOrio, who has a home run this week, 0 for 1 today. First pitch takes high. She had been the catcher in the Little League Regional run-up last year for Milford, Connecticut. Unfortunately, injured her knee and had to have surgery on it. She's yet to be cleared to catch, but she still hits bombs. <laughs> what, a, what a good job. Come to the play, come to the ball field, just bring your bat. And I love watching her take hacks at the plate. I love that she's competitive. She's not shying away. She gets her, her money's worth every time. One one pitch in there for a strike and maybe an unintended consequence, but a, a positive of the continuous batting order is a player who is physically not able or ready to play defensively because of an injury, she's still in the right. game. She can play, whereas old rules, she would not be. Yep, there's so many benefits to it. One, two, swing and a miss, strike three, and that will end the top half of the sixth inning. Erica Arnaiz has kept the Philippines on top, one nothing. She's only allowed two hits all day. We go to the home half of the six. Philippines leading one nothing. In the greater Seattle area, we're in Kirkland, Washington, just across the lake from downtown Seattle, Philippines and Connecticut. Playing for the championship, one nothing. Philippines leading. The Asia Pacific champions have gone unbeaten here in Kirkland, but so is Connecticut. And we were expecting a pitcher's duel. We've gotten one so far. We'll see if Abby Corris in the circle for Connecticut can keep this at a one-run game. I mean, you couldn't ask for much more than what we've seen today in a championship game. It comes down to one run, two great pitchers, and then get, the fans are loud, the environment. I just, you know, this is a championship game. It feels like it. The girls are playing like they're playing for a championship and it's been so entertaining.
in competitive and high-level softball. Leading off in the bottom of the sixth, Isel Tonneman. Came into today batting 333, takes outside for ball one. Wind up in the 1-0 pitch, swing and a miss, one and one. Tonneman will celebrate her 15th birthday in a couple of weeks. Also a competitive badminton player. This is her favorite athlete, Michelle Smith. That's a good one. Two-time gold medalist for Team USA. One and two. Michelle's done so much for this sport, and she'll be down in Greenville with the Little League World Series, calling some games there. Donovan is also the number two pitcher for the Philippines. One, two pitch, swings, foul ball, third base side, it's out of play. And she deserves her due here, if you haven't been keeping up with this all week. Just joining us for the championship game, we understand, but uh, Isel Tonneman, she is a no-hitter on her resume <laughs> from this week. Come on now. So she's not the number two pitcher. She, they have one a 1A and 1B. <laughs> or 1B, yeah. <laughs> one, two pitch, pops it foul again. It was a double header on opening day for Asia Pacific. And she helped Philippines in a win over Washington. Four innings, no runs, hits, or walks, and struck out eight. One two pitch, runs inside that hitter. And so the leadoff runner aboard for the Philippines. And Tonneman was fouling off pitch after pitch up in the zone. Good idea for a course to go with the changeup that time it just got away from her. So bring the top of the lineup back up. Throw line Manalo is the batter. One for two today. Eight for 18 this week. Bunts at the first pitch and it takes a tough hop. Seebeck unable to field it cleanly. And there's two on, nobody out. That was some tough spin on that one. Yeah, you're exactly right. The ball off the bat, this is a tough play to begin with, but took a took a left on her. Yeah, but, I mean, she's charging hard, expecting the butt in the right position. Sometimes the ball just bounces funny, and that's what happened to see back there. Scored in air. Runners at first and second for Bago City. And now for Bago City, the batter, right field. So nobody out, two on. If you're the Philippines, knowing that Connecticut's got some home run pop and a very good top to bottom lineup. You would love an insurance run. Oh, no doubt. Christine Jane Caracas shows butt and butts a foul up the first baseline. And those corners were charging hard. Delden and Seebeck. Bunts usually have gotten down, but sometimes they're in the air just a little bit, and so they're going to do what they can to try and get it out. You're expecting them to bunt and execute this sacrifice. We've seen it all game. We've seen it all week, how great they are at putting the bunt down. And they're playing for that insurance run. They just want to move the runners up 60 feet and try and push one across. Shows bunt, chops it foul. So there's strike two. And now this, we'll see, could change the calculus for the Philippines. Do you keep the bunt on with two strikes? It's so good at it all week, but if you miss on it here, that's an out without the advancement. You know, it wouldn't surprise me if they kept it on, but Crocus, he's already got a hit in the game. She's got power to put it into the grass. 
0-2 pitch, swings and fouls it away. Rock is one for two today, nine for 16 this week. She's been excellent. So has Abby Corris. Sub one earned run average in the circle this week. Tough spot here, two on, nobody out. Her 0-2 pitch. This is outside, one and two. That's a great 0-2 pitch. Great location, just off the plate. The hitter swings and makes contact. It's not going anywhere. Love that location. Chorus with a one-two. In the air, center field. This the shortstop giving way, and it gets down. They'll throw home, and everybody's safe. It's a base hit. No one was there to make the catch, although a couple of players might have had a shot at it. We see this so much in softball and baseball. The Bermuda Triangle, when you have the left fielder, center fielder, and shortstop going back on a ball, all have opportunities to catch it, but nobody steps up and makes the call. It falls in for a base hit. Base is loaded, no outs for the Philippines. You would consider this, and it obviously is, a golden run scoring opportunity, but Abby Corris has been here before. Base is loaded. And there was one out at the time. There were runners at second and third. Nobody out at one stage of the second inning. It was already one nothing. And from that point on, did not allow a run. Didn't allow a runner, quite frankly. She was able to strike out the side from that point. Her composure and maturity in the circle, I mean, you don't see any emotion from her. It's just all business, and even when things are going behind her, out of her control, she doesn't change what she's doing in the circle. She's got them, got them out of a jam already this, this game. Looking to do it again here. Philippines looking for some insurance, and Diana Buenafe at the plate. And Buenafe takes a strike, it's 0-1. for two today. It's three RBI, five runs scored on the week. One-nothing already for the Philippines. Abby Corris gets a foul ball to make it 0-2. I would love to play behind Abby Corris because the, her just demeanor in the circle is a calming presence. Even if you made a mistake the play before, you can look to her and see, hey, we're going to be all right. Have a lot of confidence in your pitcher. Her 0-2. Hit foul, first base side into the seats. Nice catch made by one of the Southwest fans. All the players sticking around. The Texas team wearing orange and gold. Sealy, Texas made the semifinals. Great run this week. All the teams have just been outstanding. It's been fun getting to know these players and be a part of some great memories. Pitch misses outside, one and two. Bases are loaded. Tanama at third, Manalo at second, Caracas at first. Abby Corris trying to keep it a one-run game. This is a very difficult situation, but if anyone can get out of it, it's the right-hander for Connecticut. A one-two pitch. Chopped over to the left side. It's going to get through for a base hit in to score Tanama. Manalo coming home. She's going to score. Three-nothing Philippines.
Guinefe fighting in the box. Fell behind early, 0-2, fouled off some pitches. And then just doesn't try to do too much and puts this ball in the 5-6 hole. We've seen a couple tough hops on the left side of the field today. That one finds its way into the left field. A couple more runs across. It's a two-run single for Ann Diana Bonafé. Makes it 3-0. Connecticut's going to intentionally walk Erica Arnais to reload the bases, keep the force all around. Still nobody out. Mary Antoinette Sikapore is the batter. She'll swing and foul it back 0-1. There is Caracas at third, reached on a single. Buenafe, the big two-run single to make it 3 nothing, and then the star of the tournament, Erica Arnaiz, is at first. Foul ball again, 0-2 now to Sikapore. Infield for Connecticut's pulled in, looking to get that out at the plate. Ground ball to the infield. No balls, two strikes. Called strike three. Great off-speed pitch from Abby Chorus. It's her seventh strikeout today. Her composure, I, I mean, it's, it's elite. And then coming back with a changeup. Great pitch. Getting that first out. Now a double play away to get getting out of the inning. Nice Lobrito is the batter. Bats it foul. Third baseline. Good reaction for manager Francis Fuentes getting out of the way. Nice Lobritos. Two for two. Pair of singles. There's the skipper. One pitch, chopped over to third. They're coming home, throw to the plate is in time. Well done, Julia Seebeck. She's gotten a couple of really tough bounces today. She was all over that one, perfect execution. Yeah, great job at third base by Seebeck. And now one out away, defense can go back to their regular depth, have more range, and force out at any base. They're one out a way of getting out of this jam. Rockus out on a 5-2 fielder's choice. Fuentes up swinging, hits it foul down the right field line. Four and one. Therese Francine Fuentes, 0 for two today. With four runs batted in this week. RBI opportunity here, she needs a two out hit. The 0 1 pitch. Went after that one. And a good offering from Chorus makes it 0 2. No balls, two strikes. Bases loaded for the Philippines. Already up 3-0, Chorus delivers. Swing and a miss, strike three. So Abby Chorus limits the damage, but some insurance runs coming from a two-run single from Ann Diana Buenafe. Is stepping up when her team needs them most. Connecticut with three outs to go. These insurance runs could prove important. From winning the 2023 Junior League Softball World Series Championship, they are up 3-0. Getting some insurance runs in that home half of the sixth. Honestly, they haven't needed a whole lot of insurance because Eric Arnaiz continues to dominate in the circle. I mean, those numbers, 13 strikeouts, just the one walk back in the first. And you see those numbers, and they're almost unbelievable in a championship game, but 
watching her pitch and the way she can spin the ball and how she sets up hitters, they make complete sense to me. Gave up a couple of hits to lead off the fifth inning and responded with the defensive play of the day. A diving stop on a bunt attempt. The Philippine faithful. Rooting on Bago City, plus some adopted fans from some of the other teams. They're all here supporting each other. It's been an outstanding tournament, as always. Hats off to the team here at Kirkland, Washington. Tournament director Steve Allen and his squad, they do just a tremendous job year after year. This is the 23rd season that Kirkland has hosted the Junior League Softball World Series and it just gets better and better. It's a perfect spot. The, com the community involvement, the people that are volunteering their time, it, it's a family. There's a family environment every time you come out here and can't, couldn't ask for more for these players and their experience. Nyla Jazer at the plate takes strike two all week long beyond just the softball. There's barbecues, girls night out, coaches night out. There's so many events. They even get the Blue Angels to come every year. I mean, it's just tremendous. Great job by all. 0-2, swung on and missed. Strike three, strikeout number 14 for Erica Arnides. I think there's a little extra pop on her ball right now, feeling the moment. The adrenaline really coming in right now, knowing she's two outs away from leading her team to a World Series championship. Maddie Bonanno is next. Swings, lifts it, behind second. That's gonna fall in for a base hit. Only the third hit surrendered all game by Erica Arnais. Just the fifth one she's allowed in the last three games. But it brings the tying run into the on-deck circle for Connecticut. Boy Capalbo swings and misses, strike one. Takes inside, goes to the backstop, and over to second base. Goes Bonanno. Out one and one, Chloe. Has six hits this week. Swings and misses one and two. Her nickname is Kebabs. The coaches said she got it because we do our very best here on ESPN, but last year there was a mispronunciation of her name last year. They went with kebabs, and it's stuck. So hey, it's a good nickname. Hey, that's definitely be worse. It's a good one. The one, two, swung on and missed. Strike three, and the Philippines is one out away from the title. Now you have to credit Connecticut. I mean, these hitters are going up there swinging. They're not sitting by and letting pitches go by. They're up there taking their hacks, doing their best to make something happen. Julius Seebeck swings at the first pitch, popped up left side. Labrino puts it away, and the Philippines are champions of the Junior League Softball World Series. And that's what Little League is all about. Look at the emotion from these players, hugs from coaches. They put so much into this work and effort. They're able to pull it out at the end behind 
the performance of Erica Arnais, who has been absolutely terrific all week. This Philippine team has been fun to watch, and they're walking away today as World Series champions. Here's her day. She did it all. Seven innings. She allows three hits. Strikes out 15. Only one walk. Seven more shutout innings for Erica Arnaz. Oh, by the way, she made a diving catch with runners at first and second and nobody out at one of the tensest moments of the game. And she scored the first run of the game because she had a double to open the hitting. Talk about your best player stepping up when the lights are the brightest. Erica Nobody could find an answer for her at the plate. Talented, talented pitcher and team from the Philippines. And you can just see how much this win means to them. Erica Arnaz completes the week with a record of 6-0. and 85 strikeouts, 10 walks. I mean... Uh, and a, a performance that she will remember forever and that I will remember forever. Those numbers, and she's going up against very talented hitters from all over the country. Connecticut, great group of hitters. She just proved to be too much for anyone out here in Kirkland this week. I mean, I would say they're video game numbers, but if you're posting those kind of numbers, you need a harder setting. I think you're cheating, right? I mean, it's unbelievable, but to watch it in person, watch it on TV, you can see why she's able to put up those kind of numbers. She's got everything a great pitcher has to have. Movement, velocity, poise. She put her team on her back this week. Final totals, Philippines, three runs, seven hits, no errors, nine left on. Connecticut, no runs, three hits, three errors, four left on base. Erica Arnaz, the winning pitcher, now 6-0. and oh. She was one for two with a double and a run scored. Also, Ann Diana Wenafe with a two-run single for some added insurance, which ends up not being needed. We have our championship flyover with the Blue Angels here. Tournament director Steve Allen is going to be handing out the hardware. And while we have a moment, huge thank you to Jeff Graham and our production team here from ESPN. An outstanding week. They do such a great job putting so many hours to help us bring all these games to you. And when I say all, I mean all. We are here from game one of pool play here to game 27. Tournament director. They Tournament just do director, a tremendous Steve job. Allen. So thanks to our team, the camera guys, everyone in the truck. Can't say thank you enough. Great job, guys. Go ahead, Mr. Allen. We'll leave Tournament One, two, Director three. Steve Allen Again. is going to anyway, present the title trophy. You guys, you guys played very well. You had great opponents. And you played very well. I mean, like, again, very, very well. And for that, you guys get the championship trophy. Bago City in the Philippines, 2023 Junior League Softball World Series champions. And there is a great community of supporters here in Kirkland supporting this team locally here. People who have emigrated or their roots trace back to the Philippines. And we've even heard from some of the girls representing the local District 9 team here, the hosts, that has players who they grew up coming to this event, but they were rooting for the Philippines. <laughs> I mean, the only thing that caught them out of that is now they're playing. Right. And they're so much, they're easy to root for, right? They play the game the right way. They have fundamentals. They're exciting. They have, they play with emotion and they're very talented. I mean, the, the pitching, the movement on the base running, the hitting, it's hard not to be a fan of the Philippines. And then how about the symmetry 20 years ago Bago City in the Philippines won the championship and the current manager Francis Fuentes dad was the manager of that team his sister 
Rachel Fuentes Lee McCauley was the second baseman. Now her niece, Francis's daughter, Therese Francine Fuentes, she was the second baseman today. It's part of the generational handing off of the baton of the great tradition of baseball and softball. That is what Little League is all about. And we've got the manager on with us now, Francis Fuentes, winning manager for Bago City in the Philippines. Congratulations. What does it mean to you to take this title? Well, it's a very big uh, opportunity to be here in the World Series of Junior League. I would like to thank you very much for everybody's here. Uh, I don't know what can I say, but I uh, just want to say thank you so much. I'm so very so, uh, speechless, but uh, I would like to congratulate my team, my uh, Bagu City team, my uh, Bagu City softball team. I would like to congratulate and the Little League Philippines, uh, our district administrator, Mike Salsita and the rest of their staff. I would like to thank you so much with my family, my friends, the supporter here in uh, Kirkland, the Filipino community, and my dad, the owner of this team. I would like to congratulate my family. Everybody was here. It's it's so very excited, and the kids are crying right now. But uh, we're so we're, we're so very happy. And thank you so much for our uh, mayor and uh, mayor Bagu City, Mayor Nicolas Yolo, and their staff. Thank you so much for the support and the little league. Uh, district Administrator for the Trust, I thank you so much. Coach, you have tremendous support back home from your community, and you made them proud this week. Congratulations. Just describe to me what you felt when that last out was made of the game. Well, the last out, it's, I'm so, I know it's going to be out, but, you know, I'm so very, you know, it's a, it's a, you know, the kids, uh, they do the hard work. It's, I'm, we're so very excited, and I know the pitcher. You know he's a good condition, but uh, he knows. And uh, well, thank you. I'm very specialist, but the kids are keep crying. I got to ask you one more, Coach. Every kid's got a great story, but your starting pitcher, the star of the week, Erica Arnai, six and zero. She had 85 strikeouts and 10 walks. What makes her so special? Tell me about her. Well, I just told her that you know, just train hard you know discipline and teamwork with the team so she made it she she did their job and you know she just practiced well and discipline she was fantastic your whole team was congratulations on winning the junior league softball world series title thank you so much thank you francis fuentes manager for bago city and the philippines they take it all a perfect run through the Junior League Softball World Series Championship and the MVP, without a doubt, Erica Arnais, 6 and 0, 85 Ks. I challenge you, Little League social media team, can you put all that in one highlight? I don't think you can. Uh, it would be a great reel to watch. Her yes. wheel and deal all week and walking away with the trophy now. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks again to our entire ESPN team, tournament director Steve Allen, everyone here in Kirkland. For my broadcast partner, Brittany McKinney, and our entire crew, I'm Sam Farber saying it's been a pleasure and a privilege having you with us. Congrats to Bago City in the Philippines 2023 Junior League Softball World Series Champions.